Once you have loaded a setting, the very first step that you need to undertake is to make sure that the pinhole size is set correctly. As I explained, the pinhole is what rejects out of focus light. If you make it too big, you get a lot of light, but you don't get good optical sectioning. You'll see a lot of blurry stuff. If it's too small, you get great optical sectioning, but at a certain point, you get so little light that you can't do anything useful for it. So between those two extremes, there's an ideal pinhole setting. And what we recommend uh, for that ideal setting is to go to your longest wavelength fluorophore. In this case, that's Alexa Fluor 594. So we're going to click on Alexa Fluor 594 and then adjust the pinhole size so that it is uh, one airy unit. I'll explain what that means in a moment. So you can see here there's a thing that says pinhole, there's a slider. I can move the slider. And as I move the slider, this number changes, this number changes, and this number changes. This is the diameter of the pinhole in microns, which by itself is hard to interpret. It doesn't really mean anything to us uh, without more knowledge of the optics in the system. This is the diameter normalized to something called airy units, which are uh, comparable across confocal. So it's a very useful way in which to measure the pinhole. And they also depend on wavelength. So they're normalized to wavelength. And then finally, you can see here, this is the equivalent thickness of the optical section with the pinhole set to this size, meaning we did not cut this sample. I just got it in the mail from uh, a company. But if we had wanted to get an image uh, of this kind on a wide field microscope, this is how thin we would have need to cut it. That's sort of the, the explanation for what this uh, means. And you can see that as I move this, uh, if I make it bigger, the optical section is bigger and the area units are bigger. What we recommend is to make it one area unit for your longest wavelength die, and then to make sure that that value is the same for all the other ones, even if the area units are not the same. So if I click on one AU, uh, that will make it one area unit, which is 30 microns. And we need to check and make sure that the other ones are also at 30 microns. By design, on any of the three channel settings, when you press one AU, all of them will have the proper value, which you'll notice it may not be one area unit for DAPI, but that's fine. It needs to be one area unit for the longest wavelength die and then the same number here for all the rest, which it is. If you are using a four channel setting, if you hit one AU for the longest wavelength die, it will not usually adjust the other ones and you need to copy this number and paste it into the other fluorophores.